Hey guys, welcome back to BRG Photography. Uh, my name is Ben and this is part two of our full portrait retouch uh, using Affinity Photo. Uh, in the last video, we did some basic cleanup and liquify. And in this video, we're going to get to the most important part of the retouching process and that is retouching the skin. Now in my last few videos, I was using the frequency separation method to do my skin retouching, but this time we are going to be using just dodge and burn. So to see how I do it, Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So, dodge and burn. And uh, what exactly do we mean by dodging and burning? Well, to put it in the most simplest terms, at least for what we're doing, dodge means to lighten and burn means to darken. Uh, dodge and burn are terms left over from the uh, darkroom era of film photography. But for our purposes, it's just e easy to remember that dodge means lighten and burn means to darken. So why do we wanna do that? Well, if we look here at the skin, for example, what we're trying to do with the dodge and burn retouching method is we're trying to lighten some parts of the skin that are a bit dark so that it blends in nicer with the surrounding area and maybe on some parts also uh, darken some parts that are too light so that it gets a nice uh, smooth look. So for an example, let's say down here in the chest area, you can see this kind of blotchiness here on the skin. If we were to come down here and just lighten these individual areas here, it would really blend in a lot nicer with the surrounding area and create a nice smooth look without kind of destroying any of the pixels uh, or having to do any kind of um, destructive, well, not really destructive, but a little bit destructive um, clone stamping, uh, heal bar healing brush, in painting, and stuff like that. So that's why I think the dodge and burn method has become very popular recently because you're not really changing any of the pixels, you're just making them a bit lighter or darker. So with that said, um, why don't I just get right into it and show you how I do it. Now, there are a lot of ways to dodge and burn in Affinity Photo, but I think the most popular method is by using a curves adjustment layer or two curves adjustment layers to create your dodge and burn layer. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So first thing I'm going to do is come down here and I'm going to create a new curves layer. And it's going to pop up like this. And I'm just going to raise it up a little bit like here. We can always adjust this later, which is one of the good things about doing this method, but we'll just save for that for now, okay? I'm going to then rename this uh, my Curves Dodge, and then I'm going to invert this adjustment layer. I'm gonna hit Command-I on a Mac. Is it a Alt, Option-I, Alt-I on a PC? I'm not sure, sorry, I have to check. Um, okay, and the good thing is now that it's inverted, uh, nothing happens. So if I turn it off and on, no change happens. But what I like about Affinity Photo is it has masks already built into its adjustment layers. So if I were to grab a paintbrush, a white paintbrush, and paint over this, now we can see where our adjustment was made. And you can see that by, right? That's the adjustment. I'm basically painting on the mask. And with a mask, anything that is white will be revealed and if we paint with black so if i have white if i paint with a black brush i'm going to hit x on my keyboard to swap swap my uh, colors if i hit black it's basically going to make that black and if you want to see your mask you can hit option or alt on your um and click on the thumbnail here, and this is the mask. It's all black, which means nothing is being shown through, where if we paint with a white brush, this is the uh, part that we are revealing. I don't know why it went so slow like that. So if I click anywhere else besides there, you can see that is the mask, okay? Alrighty, so what we're gonna be doing then is, we're not done yet, we're gonna have to create another one uh, curves and we are going to do the same thing except opposite this is gonna be our burn or darken layer darken that down a bit let's rename this uh, curves burn okay and same thing we're gonna invert it I think it's control I or command I on a PC I just remembered okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and group these two together gonna group these together and call them just DB for dodge and burn. So now we have two layers that we can uh, dodge on and another one that we can burn on. Alrighty, but we're not done yet. Two more things we wanna do. Now, 
In order to make it easier for us to see the differences in uh, tonal value, uh, we're gonna get rid of the color. And we're gonna do that by coming and creating a new fill layer. We're gonna fill it with black. And then we are gonna switch the blend mode to color. And this is going to give us a black and white image. So by looking at this black and white image, it's a lot easier to see some of the differences in darkness and lightness uh, without being distracted by color. And there's one more thing that I like to do to really help me see this difference even more. And I'm going to come down here and make another curves adjustment layer. And um, we're going to do a pretty severe S curve to really bump up the contrast, really make the contrast pretty harsh. And by doing this, you can see, oops, undo that. By doing this kind of extreme S curve, you'll notice that, especially down here in the chest area and here on the cheek, a lot of that contrast that was a little hard to see before becomes much more apparent. And this is gonna make it easier for us to pinpoint what areas we wanna darken and what areas we want to lighten. So uh, you can make this curve as harsh as you like, just get it to the point where you don't lose too much detail, especially in the dark areas. If we go too far and I can't see, I mean, this is really contrasty, but then I lose a lot of the detail here in the face. So let's try to like, maybe somewhere about like that, just enough where you can really see uh, this contrasts really well. Okay, that might be a bit too dark, but we'll just go, we'll save that for now. Alrighty, cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two layers, group those together. I'm just gonna call those helpers. All right, perfect. And now we are ready to dodge and burn. So let's go ahead and start with our dodge. That's what I like to do. And we're gonna grab our paintbrush and we're gonna grab the color white because we wanna reveal the adjustment underneath. And we're gonna get a brush and we're gonna make this brush, I like to go to a flow of about 2%, 0% uh, hardness and 100% opacity. And so what that means is that with a low flow brush, if I just do the brush across once, it looks like that. And if I do it again and I keep holding it down, I can get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. So this is really useful because it allows you to kind of create nice uh, gradations in your painting, as opposed to just trying to doing it with one like solid brush where it's gonna be really noticeable that that's too light. So we are going to do it with a low flow brush. I actually have a low flow brush saved over here. This is my retouching brush that I had made. And you can always go to your brush. I think if you uh, right click on it, you hit edit brush, edit brush, and you can then make all the adjustments here, then you can rename it. So you always have this uh, brush for you ready when you want. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and start with what I think is going to be a little bit easier. And I'm going to go ahead and go down here on the chest. So with my brush, with white, low flow, uh, zero hardness, and 100% opacity, I want to go ahead and start trying to paint some of these dark areas with my um, curves. And let me just show you a little bit what's happening, because when you're doing it, Sometimes it's really hard to see that you've really done anything until you turn it off and on. So let me just go ahead and try to lighten up some of these patches here. And then I'll show you what I actually did. All right, let's just do that. So if I turn it off and on, you'll see that that dark area has been lightened to kind of better blend in with the uh, surrounding area. Now, this is something that definitely takes a bit of practice, time, and a little bit of precision, because if you go too far, or if your brush is too big, it's gonna bleed into the surrounding area and you're gonna lighten things that you don't want to lighten. So actually, I feel like this is actually a little bit too light. So I'm gonna switch to a black, and with a black, I'm gonna go back and kind of paint over it, basically in a sense erasing it. And like I said, if you hit, if you click, if you hold down option and you click on the thumbnail, you can see this is the mask and these are the adjustments that I've made. Okay, 
So let's turn that off and on again, and you can see. So let me do a little bit more. I'm gonna do a few points in the face, and then I'm gonna speed up the whole process so you don't have to watch me do this for like 30 minutes, because I'll be honest, and this process uh, definitely takes a lot longer. Oops, let me make sure I'm painting with white. This, def this process definitely takes a lot longer than the uh, frequency separation method. So there's definitely merits to both, and uh, I think time is going to be one of the factors that you're going to have to think about when you decide to do frequency separation or dodge and burn. But let me just go a little bit here in the chest. I'm going to do a little bit bigger area so we can really see um, some difference. And the good thing too is that because we're looking at this image at such a high contrast, um, you don't actually have to be super, super perfect because we're seeing an extreme version of the contrast here. So for example, let me turn this off, off and on. You can see that we've done that. And if I turn off these helpers, you can see, look at that. It almost looks perfect compared to that. It's very subtle, but just that whole patch patchiness is now gone. All that with just dodging and burning. So let's go turn our helpers back on and let's do a bit more. And the good thing is uh, in my helpers, I can always come in here and I can readjust the curves. So I think I went too dark or it's a bit too harsh. I can readjust the curves here and you can do the exact same thing with your dodge here. If I feel like, you know, this is a bit too bright, you can kind of bring it down uh, to get it to where you want. I don't recommend doing this early on because you might... Um, well, I do. I don't recommend doing it later on in the process because there might be some areas where you went darker, lighter, and it may not blend well. So I think it's best to kind of find a setting you like and just keep it at that. And that's also why we do the low flow because we can kind of adjust how strong we want it just by doing with our flow brush. So I'm going to leave this chest area here for now because I want to touch on a few more points in the face, especially here on the cheek. So same thing I'm gonna come in here and just try to lighten some of these areas and especially I want to lighten this big area here which is the makeup is a bit too dark so I'm actually gonna just make big old brush strokes here to just really kind of lighten that cheek area just so I can get it to look a little bit more um, a little nicer to the surrounding area not so harsh and I'm just gonna come here and do like this. I'm just gonna do this really quick just so I can kind of show you before and after. And then I wanna talk about one more thing before I do the rest of this uh, by myself. Let's see what we've done so far. Just that we can see we've made quite a difference. Like we've really uh, kind of reduced the darkness on that cheek and kind of blended it in a, a lot nicer. And there's a few spots here. So one of my things I've kind of noticed is it's sometimes easy to want to come in here and get really close and start dodging and burning. But what happens is you're kind of looking at the detail too detailed and you're going to end up trying to like lighten like every single little dark spot that is not ever going to be seen in the final image, especially if this is just going to like Instagram or social media. So. I kind of rec I kind of recommend like definitely coming back and forth a lot to basically see like okay spots you may have missed but kind of look at it a bit how it's going to be seen uh, in your final output because if you're going to come in here and try to dodge away every single one of these little like dark things on the skin yeah you can do that if you don't mind wasting three hours doing it um, especially since no one's going to see it but if we come to about this zoom range, I can kind of see some of the bigger spots that need to be lightened, like these kind of lines here on the cheek, uh, this part here, uh, some of these areas. And with the flow, like sometimes it might just take, you know, one or two little strokes just to get it. Sometimes you may have to kind of go back and forth, back and forth a bit um, to get it to the right uh, strength. Sometimes like something like this, just maybe one little brush stroke to, uh, kind of get it looking nice and you can see just with that we've kind of uh, even things out a bit uh, I could probably go a bit lighter on this whole big spot here this is something that's just definitely gonna take time and so you don't want to kind of rush through it 
uh, especially on an image like this where it is quite detailed. Um, if it was a lot of like a, if it was like a medium shot or a full body shot where we're not seeing this much detail in the face, then you could probably get away with doing it a lot faster. But because this is a pretty uh, sharp image and we can see a ton of skin tail skin detail, we want to try to be as precise as possible. So I'm gonna move on over here, uh, like this kind of darkness around here. We can just basically just make big old brush strokes to brush it out. Um, and we can kind of see some more here. All right, and let me just go ahead and turn it off and on. It's always good to kind of go off and on and just see like what you've done because sometimes it's easy to really go too far or even not go far enough. And the good thing too is that eventually if you want, you can always lower the opacity if you feel you've gone too far. So that's why I don't actually mind going a bit too extreme when I'm doing this because I always know later on I can erase certain areas, I can uh, lower the opacity, um, so it's pretty flexible. All right, so that's that. Let me just go over one more part up here in the forehead. So we can see up here in the forehead, it is kind of like a bit uh, blotchy. So this is something where in an instance like this, you may just have to spend the time to kind of go through each little dark spot to kind of just even it out a bit. Um, if you feel this is something that needs to be definitely corrected. And like I said before, this is just something that's just going to take time and just put on some good music, uh, relax, and just do it. I actually find this part of the retouching process enjoyable, so I don't mind it. But this might be a chance where you might say, you know what, forget this. I want to do it in frequency separation because I can just get through it a lot faster and that's totally fine and it'll probably look just as good. I just want to show you a few different methods of doing skin retouching so that um, you've got a lot more tools in your tool belt when you uh, come to your retouching. So let me just look at that on and off. See, that's all we've done just like that. And I think those are pretty much the main problem areas. Like there's a dark line here. I'm just gonna kinda go through that and this darkness up here. And like I said, because we are looking at this pretty extreme, if I turn my helpers off, you will actually see what difference that made and how it looks really, really natural, especially up here in the forehead. Uh, we kind of even out that patchiness, especially here on the cheek. We've really evened that out really nicely. We've got this done really good. And even down here in the chest, uh, we fix a lot of that. So those are kind of my main tips for the uh, dodging process. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and finish this up on my own. And uh, I will see you back in a few seconds. Alrighty, so enjoy. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with this. Uh, that took me about 20 minutes. Let me go ahead and turn the helper layer back on first so you can kind of see. So I'm gonna turn my dodge layer off and then on, off and on. And once we turn the helpers off, we can really see that even though what we've done was quite subtle, it does make quite a big difference. So we look down here in the chest, uh, the eyes are underneath the eyes, this cheek area and on the forehead, just by lightening up certain areas, we've really evened out everything and made her look more beautiful than she already looks. And, um, but we've kept all of this great, great skin tone. See, looks good. All right, so that was just dodging. I mean, that's all we were doing was lightening uh, certain areas. So now we're gonna do, so what we're going to do now is uh, the burn step. And uh, I always find that there seems to be a lot less things that need to be darkened than things need to be lightened, but I can definitely see a few parts that need to be darkened. So let me go ahead and turn my helpers back on. 
and say for example this little strip of light skin here in the neck I have a white paintbrush now we are painting on my burn layer and this is gonna darken things I'm just gonna come and paint over that just to kind of make it look darker and so that's all we did so what we're gonna do is just look for some areas that were maybe light or have light patches and we're gonna go through and try to darken that and this is not gonna take too much time because I always feel that uh, things need to seem to be lightened more than uh, darkened but there definitely are a few spots uh, we can come in here and see that are a bit light and even after we've done this we can always come back and do one final little um, like healing brush just to get any small details that we may have missed uh, maybe we're gonna try to darken up some of this here so it just kinda blends in a bit nicer maybe try that see, I think that went a bit this is a bit too dark so I'm gonna go, ahead and go to a white a black brush to kind of uh, erase this like that okay and then switch back and just try to get that area around it we'll say that's good for now it's a little light right here so I'm gonna just darken that to even it up and up here in the forehead um, yeah some instead of trying to lighten everything I intentionally left some parts some parts dark because I knew that I would come in here and just actually darken the surrounding area so this is just something that does just take practice and it's just gonna take time uh, you don't want to rush through it you just want to kind of um, take your time and be careful because that is going to give you the best results okay and you know sometimes you might realize oh I missed a little spot here this little spot should be lighter well I just go back down to your burn layer or your dodge layer I'm sorry and lighten that little area so because these two things are working on separate layers it's really easy just to go back and forth and uh, you know find thing that you find parts that you may have missed no harm in doing that all right so let's go back to burn uh, yeah there's a little kind of light strip here we're gonna just darken this to kind of blend it in a bit nicer and you can see here on the lip now we're gonna do a separate video on the makeup but uh, it's just kind of lighter here let's see if I can just darken this a little bit just just to get it kind of dark we will come in here and do the lips uh, more in depth in a later video but just by darkening some of these like splotchiness on the makeup or the lipstick um, makes a little bit of a difference and uh, yeah we'll get to it uh, more in depth uh, in a later video I'll have a whole video on just like the makeup like eye eyes and lips and makeup we'll do that but just for now, let's just kind of do this. And actually that makes quite a difference already. Just coming in here and darkening things. And zooming out, and is there any parts that need to be just darkened a little bit? Um, I think this looks pretty good so far. Like I said, there's usually not too much that needs to be darkened. Um, but it's really going to depend on the image. It's going to depend on your model's uh, complexion and skin tone, if they're having a good skin day or a bad skin day, um, like that. And so I will also say that this is what I've been calling uh, my corrective dodge and burn because we will have another step later on where we are going to do kind of a creative dodge and burn where we're going to do some uh, contouring basically using the lighten and darken to kind of help make the face look a bit more three-dimensional uh, really give it some nice depth and uh, stuff like that so let me go ahead and turn the helper layers off I think if you may have if you watch the time lapse you may have noticed that sometimes I did work uh, without the helper layers on and that's fine because sometimes when you turn the skin color back on you might notice things that you didn't notice when you were looking at it just in black and white like for example down here in the lip this is kind of light I want to see if I can just darken up this patch here and you'll definitely notice that um it's a lot more forgiving uh, when you are working on here as opposed to looking at that really high contrast uh, 
S curve. And I guess you could, you could turn your helper layers on and just turn off that high contrast S curve. That might actually help you out as well to see uh, some of the spots that need to be darkened and lighting, lightened. But it's up to you. Uh, you're gonna eventually, the more you do this, you're gonna find what works for you and what works for what, what doesn't work for you. So feel free to experiment and just try to um, get what works best for you because that's gonna give you the best looking results when you're comfortable with what you're doing and you're confident in what you are doing. It's gonna look uh, good. So again, like I said, I'm going, I'm still going a little bit back and forth. Like as I dodge certain areas, I'm sorry, as I burn certain areas, I might realize, okay, well, now I need to darken that because I lightened the area around it or vice versa. So no problem in going back and forth. It's definitely something you want to try to get right and just spend your time uh, doing it to get it done and right the first time as opposed to having to constantly going back and forth because sometimes if you've done other effects and stuff on top, it's hard to go back. Like if I were to go back to this step where we did the uh, detail, it might not match up because we've now darkened some of these areas above that layer. And if we try to go back and heal something, it might not uh, match with what's happening above, if that makes any sense. So, um, Usually if I need to do that, I'll just create a brand new layer on top of everything and do some final little uh, retouches. But I think for our burn, we are pretty much done. Like I said, I could probably spend another 20 minutes just kind of going through little, little details here. But I think we are going to be done, at least for this video here. So let's go ahead and do a quick little uh, before and after. Let me turn this helper layer off. Let's zoom out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on the group so I can turn them both on and off. And this is before, and this is after. Before and after, let's zoom in a little bit. And this is gonna be before, and this is after. And if we also include what we did in our last video, you'll see a really big difference. This is the before and this is the after and we've kept all of the wonderful skin detail and skin texture she has and we've just basically cleaned it up so that is going to conclude our dodge and burn for retouching i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i think maybe in the next video we will get into the hair which is going to be kind of difficult but it should be fun so uh i hope you guys enjoyed this um and i will be seeing you in the next video please leave a comment tell me what you think or uh, if you have any questions let me know i'll be happy to answer them and uh, if you have any advice or tips for me i'm happy to learn so um hope to see you guys soon and uh thanks for watching bye